Oh, hello everybody. How ridiculous do I look right now? Super ready. Show you what the outside looks like. It didn't even snow that much, really. It's pretty cold outside. I'm wearing such a big coat that I don't feel it. So, bundle up correctly and you're good. I'll take this crap off now, though. One, 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 one. So today I wanted to talk about the books that I am most looking forward to reading in 2016. Most of the books that I'm trying to read in 2016 kind of have something in common. Typically they're really long reads because these are ones that I always put off because they're kind of long. And there's also a lot of non-fiction in here. I put them on this list to try to make sure that I come through and read them all. The first book is ta Coates' Between the World and Me. This is ta Coates' much praised National Book Award winning book. One thing that I really like about ta Coates on The Atlantic is how he focuses on the body to explain and also placing that all in the context of history. I know it's going to be heart-wrenching, but yes, uh, this is a book that I know I must read, so I am putting it at the top of my list for this year. The second book that I want to read, the author was a guest on On Point with Tom Ashbrook, which is one of my favorite podcasts, and his name is Reginald Dwayne Betts. He wrote Bastards of the Reagan Era. This book is actually a collection of poems. I'm a type of person that does not really read poetry, but having him on On Point with Tom Ashbrook and having him read out loud, you know, perform his, his poems, I was like, I need to read this. And also he was inspired by Kendrick Lamar's music for the title of his book. There's an even more important topic I'd like to discuss. The dysfunctional bastards of the Ronald Reagan era. So basically I was all in. He actually went to jail when he was 16 and now he's out and he is studying at Yale Law School and you can see why it was that he ended up in these circumstances not necessarily just his personal experience but also put that in the context of growing up in the Reagan era and being a black man in that time period. So I am really excited to read that book and expand my poetry reading as well. The next book I want to read is actually a fiction book and this one I have heard recommended on booktube. It's a historical fiction based in the 1920s uh, and flappers. It's called The Diviners by Libba Bray. I've actually never read anything by Libba Bray. I have one of her books but I've never read it. But this one just sounds totally up my alley and there's also more to it than just historical fiction. I believe there's kind of some magic involved too. I'm pretty excited to get to that book. And this is one that's kind of long too, so read long books. The fourth book I have on my list is Ghetto Side, and this is by Jill Levy, I want to say. Levy. Levy? L-E-O-V-Y. This one focuses on one specific murder, kind of how sometimes victims in those types of cities are forgotten. This reminds me a lot of the documentary Tales of the Grim Sleeper by Nick Broomfield, um, which focus also, it focused on a serial killer in LA, and it's kind of like the police officers and investigators in the area don't really pay attention to the victims and don't really try to solve these murders and it's kind of like they are forgotten. So I'm kind of looking for the same kind of vibe with Ghetto Side and just with a different case. The next book I want to get to is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Night Film is supposed to be a thriller and I've heard a lot of good things about it on booktube. Pretty much everybody I watch has recommended it. I wanted to get into a longer kind of thriller as well. I kind of want the plot to build up a lot more and really get in my head, which this book is supposed to do. It's supposed to be really twisted and like and that's something you should read before bed. And I kind of just really like the setup of the story so far. Like there's a journalist that's the main character and they're trying to figure out suic apparent suicide but not, might not be a suicide. The father of the person who passed away, he's a film director. His movies are kind of scary in the, and thrillers and in the same way that this book feels like it's a little bit meta in that way. I kind of just want to read a lot of psychological reads. I find that those are some of the most satisfying when it comes to, you know, getting me engaged and like really into the story. So for that reason, I want to read more of them. So I'm trying out the Read Harder Challenge from Book Riot. I tried to do that Pop Sugar 50 book, whatever, 53 book challenge last year and it was definitely way too much. So I went for this one and this Read Harder Challenge still has a lot of 
interesting challenges but it's only 24-ish books um, that you have to commit to. I think that'll go way more smoothly. One of these books that I'm gonna fit into one of the categories um, is What It Takes and this book is a monster. It is more than a thousand pages but it's kind of like the book when it comes to politics that you have to read before you read anything else. After I read All the Truth is Out, which was one of my favorite books in 2015, I knew that I needed to read more politics books. I'm going to make it a challenge that I read this book before the election in November. This book focuses on the election of 1988, so it is Gary Hart, which was the what uh, the Truth is Out focused on mostly, and it was also Michael Dukakis, and it was also George Bush and Bob Dole. So all of these characters that have played a big role in how politics have shaped up in the past 30-40 years. So I want to just get kind of the historical context to it. I'm hoping that it's really, you know, flippable and I can get through it pretty okay for a thousand pages. Another book I want to get to is The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace by Jeff Hobbs. So basically it focuses on this guy who was raised not in a very good environment. He was so brilliant he ended up getting a scholarship to attend Yale and after he graduated he came back to where he was from and he ended up in the drug trade and he was murdered at age 30. I, I want to see uh, what this man could have been and why he didn't, why he didn't end up living the life that everybody feels like American opportunity can give you so long as you go to college and earn a degree. And finally, the last book is a fiction book. This one is My Brilliant Friend. I have heard so freaking much about Elena Ferrante and basically the Neapolitan series that she has and how beautiful these stories are and how they focus on women's relationships and friendships. There's a lot of books written about life post-World War II, but not very many from a non-winner's point of view. So this book is set in Italy and you know kind of like how life was after World War II there and how these two women continue to grow in that life. I'm just really excited to read this book because I've just heard that the writing is really beautiful and that the characters are really beautiful. I really want to read these books and I need to read these books. You better hold me to it. I'll hold me to it. I hope you have a great 2016 reading year and thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!